Hello, I'm Steve Wahlberg with White Horse Media, and I'm here with a couple of guests that I met, believe it or not, less than a week ago in a hot tub. They have such an amazing story that we've decided to film a, a short program to inspire you and to give you an opportunity to give to help kids in Africa. John Skoog, president of Beyond Vision Foundation, and Jackie, if I can say your name right, Musioka. Yeah. She is the uh, founder and the director of a school called Beyond the Vision Community School. And I'm gonna pretty much try to get out of the way most of the time and have you two tell us what's going on. So John, why don't we just start with you and, and uh, tell us how you two met and why you're involved with Jackie. Well, with the, in our meeting the first time, Jackie had Facebooked me and asked me if I could take and uh, lead or pay for her class for teachers to go to a course. And I told her I didn't know anything about it because I was unaware of anything in that nature. I thought maybe one of my friends had something. So I started asking her a little bit about what she does. And she said she was a teaching, she had a school and she had teachers that she wanted to bring and she feeds orphan kids and teaches orphan kids. So I asked her if I could buy presents for the kids. It was Christmas time. And so she said, well, I don't need presents. I need food. And so I started feeding kids. And at this point, you weren't 100% you weren't positive that this wasn't just a scam uh, coming out of Africa, right? I didn't have any way of knowing whether it was a scam right. or not. But she had said she had 60 children that she needed to feed. And so we started feeding 60 children. And uh, it wasn't until two years later when I actually formed my foundation that I had discovered that it was real. And, and a little over a year ago, you actually flew to, to Africa. You went to Nairobi, you saw the school, you had a crew with you, or a whole group of people. And tell us about that and what did you see? Well, Sana Lee brought me to Nairobi in October of 2018 as we were going to go look at her project, which is an orphanage, and she promised me she would show me my school. She's the one who verified that the school actually existed and that Jackie was there. And she had told me at that point in time that she, she was beyond crying for Kenya until she saw the school and the poorness of the slums. So in October, she asked me if I would join her to go there and she would show me the school with Jackie. So I went there and saw the school, walked the streets of the slum, uh, participated in the graduation for the school children. So the school is in a slum. Yeah. And I've seen pictures. You just showed mm -hmm. me pictures a little while ago, and we'll put a lot of these pictures on the screen. And so, so you can see with your own eyes what these kids, uh, the, the living conditions that they're living under, and how different it is from living in most places in America, at least mm -hmm. what, what I'm used to. So Jackie, tell us about the school how it started, when it started, and you know what's going on there now. Uh, the school started in 2013. It started as a, as a way of bringing children together from the slum so that I can influence them. One, with the word of God, and two, with etiquette programs so that I can take out the slumness in them for them to fit in, into any social setting. I had a heart for slum children. I fell in love with slum children over 15 years ago. The first time I stepped into a slum in Nairobi, I fell in love with them. Mm. People don't like slum children because they are dirty, but that's what drew me to them. They are neglected. No one wants them. And I fell in love with them. The reason I put up the school is so that I can have them there every day to love them and to educate them. They are not loved at home. They're used to violence. They're used to a very hard life. But I thought, let me bring them here and love them. Let, me, let, me, let them see another type of help. That I can love them, that I can f we can actually feed them and educate them. Most of the children that we educate, over 90%, this is the first time they're getting education in their whole family lineage. They're the first ones to get education. And that changes a lot in their lives. And that's why I do the school. It's a, it's a huge impact on the families there. It's a huge impact on the children. The feeding itself is what draws them to the school. 
they come there because they have food and they are sure of food. So as they are coming to eat and to feed, they get into the school and they get education and their ch life changes. And we teach them the word of God, of course. And I have transferred my faith to them. They have come to know that the reason why I do this is because of God and the love of God in me. God called me to do this. Yeah, I yeah. answered. Yeah. And you're from Kenya. I'm from Kenya. So how did you get into Nairobi, into the slum, to see the need there? Uh, through a friend of mine in church. He, he saw how I work with children in the church, and he told me that I would love what he does, and he took me to the slum. That's the first day I ever went to a slum, and I fell in love with the children there. And, and how did you get there, or how were you allowed to, to start a school on the property that you're on? I don't know. You don't know how? Yeah. I asked myself I go to that slum. I ask myself that question every day. I don't know. At some point we'll talk about how you want to buy that property, right? Yeah. But now you're, you're on that property. We're on that property and uh, we are very secure. The slum has gangs that control it. We have never been harmed. And I've personally never been harmed. I walk into that slum every day. Mm -hmm. I've never been harmed. They actually protect me. And, and the gangs protect you? They protect me. Because they know what you're doing is a yes, good thing. Yes, yes. And they bring children. And like probably if the they angels are involved with that. Uh, exactly, exactly. They even bring children who are abused. They rescue children, bring them there, and they tell them to educate. They even bring them and ask me what, what I need. They buy for, they get books for the children they bring in. And they tell me, if you need anything, please tell us. And you started with 60 students, 60 right? children. And now how many do you have? 260. 260. Yes. And, and I saw some slides. They, they actually have uniforms. And they have how uniform. do you get the money for these uniforms? Uh, right now, actually, we have uniform. We are getting uniform from a school in Australia. I understand in the Western world, every year children change their uniform. So, they, so instead of throwing away their uniform, they use uniform, they ship it to Kenya so that we can use. And where do you get the food from? Uh, well, wishes. John has been our biggest support. So when, when John, when you got involved with Jackie and you went over there and you saw the real need, then you started a foundation, Beyond the Vision Foundation, to raise funds to help with Beyond the Vision School. Is that correct? Yeah, the needs of the school are bigger than my pocketbook. Yeah. All right. And so we're trying to buy the property that the school sits on. We're trying to rebuild the buildings that are existing so we can uh, have more students. We have another 150 students who'd like to join the school. And so we continue to look for needs or financial uh, stability to help stabilize the school even more than what I've been able to do for it. Yeah. And before we actually started this interview, uh, you told me a number of stories that just, you know, they really <laughs> yeah. pull on the heart. I'm, I'm a, a father, I've got mm. a little daughter, she's not so little anymore. She's 11, almost 12. My son's 15, so I have a heart for kids too. Yeah. And so tell us just a couple of the stories. I mean, I'm sure we could go on for two hours, <laughs> but just a couple of the, of the amazing stories of these children and how their lives have been changed by coming to your school. I have He's, uh, he, he used to come to class, but he'd be dazed. Teachers would complain and tell me, this boy looks like he's into drugs. The other thing I noticed that he would fold his pants, his school pants. So uh, I would ask him, please straighten your pants. But I didn't know that was the code for gangs mm -hmm. in the That's area. Right. He would straighten, but when he's going home, you'd see him fold. And I realized, I realized that he's in the gangs, in the, in the slum. He wasn't paying attention to education. He would come get, when he wants. Maybe eat after lunch, he would disappear on us. And then one time, I actually told him that I've given him a good opportunity. Then it seemed like he wants to get education and, and asked him to, to just go and be with the gangs. That was on Friday. On Monday, he came to school at 6.30. He stayed the whole day. The whole week, he stayed the whole day. And asked, I called him and asked him, <coughs> you've really changed. What happened? He told me, I've been waiting for you to call me. He told me I was with the gangs. I told him, yes, I know. He told me I missed death by a whisker. Three of his friends, I think they'd gone to rob somewhere. Three of his friends were shot by the police. He missed a bullet. He told me he actually a bullet passed by him. 
and he missed it. And he came and told me, I want to do what you always tell me to do. I want education. I want to change my life. I want to go to church. Mm -hmm. And I gave, him, I gave him the opportunity. He was in the eighth grade. When, when they graduated, I asked John, John, do you think we should sponsor everyone? John said yes. And I told him, I'm not sure about <laughs> He told me, let's sponsor everyone. And he worked on some sponsorships and we took them to high school. Right now in high school, he's top of his class. Kenya education is on merit based. So basically he is number one out of 161 students. Students who do, are not from the slum. Students from other ba backgrounds, children from rich backgrounds. He's top of his class. So he came from a gang. He came from into a the gang. slum. Yes. And he, he worked his way up and he was in eighth grade. He graduated. He graduated. And then he was able to then go on to another he school. He didn't even perform well in eighth grade because he turned his life halfway eighth grade. Halfway in the year. So his, his performance wasn't the best. We, uh, we took him to a school that another boy from the same class was admitted by the government, where that boy was admitted by the government. And we asked him, since you're bringing this boy here, can we have another one? But his performance wasn't good. They said, okay. And he got admitted there. And he's totally changed his life. Mm. He's top of his class, very well disciplined. And his, his life looks like it's totally changed. And we mm. thank God for that. So from the gangs and missing a bullet, yeah. now top of his class. Top of his class. We have <laughs> Sorry. Oh, you going to tell me, you can tell me another one? Yeah, we have <laughs> Okay. She, when she was in school, at the school, she looked very dull. You know, the children who don't talk? She was very dull, and she wasn't even playing with her mates. And then, when she was in eighth grade, she would tell me, Are you, do you have sponsorship for next year for anyone? I'd say, no. You have to sponsor me. I want to go to high school. And I told her, yes, I, I'll sponsor you. Every time she sees me, she'll tell me, she never used to talk to me until eighth grade. And she would tell me, I want a school outside Nairobi. And I want a school far from Nairobi, and I want a boarding school. And she would ask me, how much do you want me to work hard? I would tell her, I want these kind of marks for you to get a good school. That's what she did. She got admitted in a school maybe 200 kilometers from Nairobi also. And when she was in, one of the days she came for, for a short midterm break, which is normally a week. She went back. When they were about to, to come for holiday, the school called me. The school told me, this girl has refused to go home. She has said, we call Jackie. If you don't call Jackie, she'll get out of that school. No one will ever see her. She'll just go and disappear from the face of the earth. I went to the school and I asked, what's the problem? Before that, she was fainting. She had fainting spells. She would faint all the time. Even when she went to a high school, she'd just faint. She'd sit down and just faint, collapse. And the school told me, if she faints again, they may have to get rid of her because they're afraid she may die in the school. And so this time, when they called me, I went to talk to her. She told me, I'm not going back home. This is the reason why I told you I want this sponsorship. I asked her why. She said, my dad rapes me at home. And she said, since I was in the fifth grade, he sexually abuses me. And she told me, I'm not going home. Take me with you or I'll disappear from the face of the earth. And we rescued her and took her to a rescue center. And now she's just graduated from high school. Next year she'll be in university. Mm. Wow. Yeah. And you also told me a little while ago that you mentioned taking the slum out of the kids. Yeah. And that sometimes they come to the school and they just go to the bathroom as they're walking, walking around because yeah. that's what they're used to. And yeah. then you pick them up and no matter what they smell like or mm. anything, and then you just clean them up and... Yeah. You, you, you feel like this is part of God's call on your life. It's, it's the love of God. I can't explain it. Children come, like the younger children, when they are dirty, they basically pee on themselves or, or go pooping on themselves. And they, I love children and children love me. If a kid comes and they, they, they're not happy, they're sad, I'll pick them up and I'll carry them. I don't care whether they're dirty or not. And I think the love of God is what has made them change. And we teach them how to use the toilet. We teach them how to be clean. Uh, slum children are not your normal child. They don't have enough water, 
so their hygiene is not the best. The only, the only way they know how to resolve conflict is by violence, because that's what they see every day. They, they, don't, they don't have your normal mannerism because they don't, they're not taught at home. For example, if you're serving them food, they fight over the food because they scramble because they think there'll be no food for tomorrow or for later or they may not get the food. That's not your normal child. And that's why they're, they're re rejected by other social settings. They're rejected when they're outside the slum because their mannerism is totally different. And that's what we teach them. We try to get that out of them. When you come to our school, you never see a child fighting. And that's a school because even in the other schools, children fight. You never see a child fighting in our school. And how many teachers do you have now? We have nine teachers. You have nine teachers. Yes. And, and you teach what classes? What are the subjects you teach them? Uh, we, they learn English. They learn Swahili. They learn science, maths, um, CRE. CRE is uh, Christian religious education. Our government allows us to teach that. It's actually in the syllabus. And we have what we call social studies, which is basically about everything social, that, um, everything social. And you, you're, you're allowed to teach them the Bible? Yes, the Bible is a mm. textbook. It's a textbook. So do you class. teach them, do they sing songs? Oh. They sing songs. And they they sing pray, Christian they learn songs. how to we pray? pray. Yeah. They learn how to accept Jesus exactly. as their savior? Exactly. Uh, children have accepted Jesus in our school. Children have accepted Jesus in our school. The children have gone to church the first time by coming to our school Praise because we God. encourage them to go to church. So it's, all, it's not just about the education. They're, they're, they're learning how to It's about their souls. It's about their souls. And we have many projects where people sponsor children in different schools. This model is different because we put them here and bring them up. We, we kind of nurture them like a mother would. We don't, we don't just put in money. We bring them up like a mother would. And you love them. And we love them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's the difference. That's amazing. Yeah, and, and many of these kids come from from the pictures you showed me. They don't they don't have houses, right? They just live in little tiny places. Sometimes five people in in one little tent. Those are houses, too. Those are the houses. That's what they call a house. Yeah, those are houses. They actually rent Not houses them. houses like what we're used to. Yeah, it's the slum house, and it's very cheap. They pay like uh, ten dollars a month, and they're locked out most of the time because they can't afford to pay that. <laughs> yeah, they sleep out most of the time. It's a normal occurrence in the slum. So John, tell us what, what are the needs? What are, you, what are you raising funds for? Specifically, what do you, you, know, what do you need? Mm -hmm. What is it gonna go for? What's your prayer and your mm -hmm. hope and your, your dream when people watch this that they will give for what purpose? Well, with the, with the school itself, we have uh, several different needs, areas that we need to meet. One of them, we have 17 children graduating this year. So each child is $800 to bring them from eighth grade into the ninth grade. So like Jackie mentioned, with rent at $10 a month and people making 15 to $20 a month for their income, you can imagine $800 is unattainable for the parents. But this $800 means an opportunity for a child to actually leave the slums, be raised away from the family in a boarding school, a public boarding school, for a year. And it's actually their ticket out of the slums and to integrate into society and become educated further. Many of these children, this is the first time or the first one out of five generations to actually become educated. So that's one priority that we have. Um, second one would be that the building itself is in need of a lot of repairs and we'd like to buy the land and the land cost is about $35,000 for us to buy that and we'd go through and rebuild the walls on the school. In the school itself, the bathroom back walls are about four feet up rotted off so when the children go to the bathroom they're fully exposed going to the bathroom to the neighborhood. So we'd like to be able to get the privacy back for the children. And sure, the, the structure of the building itself is basically looks like chicken coops. When you say the building, so the school is the building, one building. Yeah. yeah, there's one building and there's actually another building that has been burned from an illegal hookup from uh, electrical fire. And so we'd like to rebuild that building too. Okay, like so I two mentioned. Buildings. Yeah, mm -hmm. so like I mentioned earlier, we have 
150 children more who would like to join our school, and uh, the school itself could be, with the extra building, could accommodate that. Then we need to try to get 15 teachers versus nine teachers so we can handle the amount of children we have. And so we have the, the building. We'd like to purchase land and rebuild those buildings, and we'd like to- and Sponsor the students sponsor to graduate, the students and anything else? Well, in my own case, why with, with what I do, um, I'm limited on my budget to where we're at for feeding the children, so we'd like to increase our feeding ability for more children. And you, you gave me a figure of approximately 200,000, I think it was 208. Yeah, yeah. We'd like to, it's, the total is coming to $208,000, okay. and that's for the coming year. Mm -hmm. We'd like to also continue operating. There are things that come with operation. We need uh, stationery for the children. We need teachers. We have nine teachers right now, and the government um, regulations are we need to have a minimum of 15 teachers. We need to give the children uh, some dignity as much as we're educating them. If we have more qualified teachers, it means they can perform better in their education, and uh, we need to keep operating. We need, we need to keep being there. And so as much as we want to buy the land to put better structures, we still need to be operating every month and making sure the children eat, they get their education, and we have other programs, programs running. Okay, and we'll, yeah. we'll put all the information on the screen when we're done, yeah. <coughs> so people will know exactly where to go for more information and where to give and how yes. to give. Yeah. Uh, both of you, do you have anything final that you wanna say to those that are, are watching this? You've got a camera right there you can look at and just yeah. talk from your heart about what you hope will happen as a result of being here. Um, I say that God has given me this privilege. It's not a burden. It's like, a, it's like watching a flower blossom, which is a privilege from God. I'd like for you to join us. I'm only one, John is only one, but the work is a lot. If you join us, we'll do a lot. And, and you'll have the privilege of seeing a child's life change completely. It's really a privilege. And I welcome you to join us. Wonderful. Yeah. John? When having mm -hmm. walked through the slums and seeing the poorness of the slum, and recognizing how devastatingly poor the slum people are. But then to recognize that in the school, we are handling the poor of the poorest. So even the slum people will say these children that we have are the poorest, the poorest. We have that opportunity to take them, lift them up and to, to carry them and to bring them to new heights, give them opportunity uh, to, to uh, advance in society where they are not able to advance before. And so my hope is that we could take these in our arms and to give them that chance to, to expand their own horizons, to have hope, hope in tomorrow, and to grow. Um, it's a great chance to help others in need, and that's our goal, is to help those in need. Wonderful, and Jackie, I, I um we spoke a little bit before, before this moment, and you thought of a Bible verse, yeah. and I was thinking of the same <laughs> verse. Yes. And this is in Matthew chapter 20, 25. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it talks about uh, everybody being divided at the end of time between mm -hmm. the sheep and the goats. And the, the sheep are those who meet the needs of those who are hungry, thirsty, naked, poor, yeah. and then uh, the goats don't do that. They're, they're just thinking about being a goat but the sheep are thinking about helping others. And finally, the, the king says to those on his right, to the sheep, he says, come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And then Jesus says, because I, it was me that was hungry. I was thirsty. I was in need. I was in the slums yeah. in Nairobi. And then Jesus said that the righteous say, well, Lord, we didn't know it was you. And then Jesus says, in as much, truly I say to you, in as much as you have done it to one of the least of these, and you're saying these are the least, this is the bottom of the bottom, this is the, and yet they're important to God, aren't they, everyone? Because you've done it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you've done it to me. You've done it to me. And God opens up doors for us to give. As I mentioned, we met in a hot tub, we were <laughs> relaxing. Uh, after swimming in a pool, and we'd never met, we just started talking, and 
And this is the result of, uh, of our conversation. And one thing I didn't tell you was that then the night that I left from uh, after having dinner with you at a Mexican restaurant in Spirit Lake, uh, after we were in the hot tub and as I was driving home that night in the dark, uh, I missed a gigantic moose walking right in front of my car. I missed him by about this much. And I saw him in my headlights, just, I just, you know, we just, he was walking this way and I went this way and we just, and just another second. And if I would have hit that moose, who knows what would have happened. And you know, and as I think about little stories like that, I think I missed the moose. And God has given you an opportunity right now to give to this ministry to help children in Nairobi who, who uh, don't have hardly anything. And we just, we're gonna be praying that you won't miss, that you won't miss this opportunity to give to a very, very worthy cause. Thank you for watching.